Hey, Dave here from Excel Jet. So today we're continuing our conversation on Excel shortcuts. In the last video, I talked about why Excel shortcuts are so challenging, and I gave you six good reasons that you should learn them anyway. And the gist of it is that shortcuts can save you time right now, today, and they can save you time in the future, and they also give you really keen insight into Excel's most powerful features. They really let you leverage Excel and use the program in a more powerful, intelligent way. I also mentioned the idea of shortcut recipes. And you can think of these recipes as a sequence of shortcuts that you perform in a certain order that lets you accomplish a difficult or challenging task in Excel. For example, if you downloaded some data from another system, or if somebody gave you an export from another system, and you open it up and you find there's more than 30,000 rows of data, but for some reason uh, over 1,000 of those rows are blank just randomly, then that's a difficult problem if you try to solve it manually. You could open up the document and go to the first blank row, delete it using a shortcut, move to the next blank row, delete it using the shortcut and so on, but it's still gonna take a long time to remove all those blank rows. On the other hand, you could use a simple shortcut recipe and you could delete all of those blank rows wherever they are in less than 20 seconds with just a few steps. I'm gonna show you that shortcut recipe and a couple of other of my favorite shortcut recipes in just a minute, but first I wanna mention uh, a few ideas about how you can learn shortcuts better. And actually, I want to mention or share some thoughts on some things I think you shouldn't do. So number one, uh, don't download a big list of shortcuts. And by the way, we have a good list on our website that you should get. But don't get that list and go to the first shortcut and start at the top. Excel has hundreds of shortcuts, and you'll feel overwhelmed and lose energy and interest. Number two. Don't just research uh, Excel shortcuts casually. More than anything, shortcuts require practice, and so you just have to get used to that idea and plan for it. Number three, don't start with the ribbon shortcuts. I mentioned in the last video that you can use your keyboard to control Excel using what are called uh, accelerator keys and the ribbon, and you can perform almost any command in Excel using your keyboard. But what I recommend that you do is learn the dedicated shortcuts where they exist, and then come back and add ribbon shortcuts if there's a shortcut that you really feel like you're missing. Number four, don't try to learn shortcuts organized around a particular key. So if you look um, out on the web, you'll find some interesting and really kind of useful uh, shortcut lists or tables that show all of the shortcuts that are related to the F2 key, all the shortcuts that are related to the F3 key, the F6 key, and so on. But rather than try to think of shortcuts um, according to keys on your keyboard, it makes a lot more sense to organize your effort around shortcuts that are related and hopefully shortcuts that are in an area that you'll use every day. And number five, don't try to learn all of Excel shortcuts at once. Uh, there's hundreds of shortcuts and it's really important with this kind of skill that you focus your energy in one area and on a collection of shortcuts that are related and then only move on after you've had pretty good luck at remembering those shortcuts. Okay, so now let's go look at some shortcut recipes. Again, shortcut recipes can really save you time when you have to solve a problem in Excel that would require a lot of manual effort. In this way, they're really the most powerful kind of shortcut in Excel. Okay, so now let's look at several useful shortcut recipes. Shortcut recipes are powerful because they can solve big, messy problems quickly and save you a lot of time. In this first example, we have a big set of data that contains a lot of blank rows. If I move to the last cell, you can see that there's over 36,000 rows of data, and looking at the count, just over 33,000 rows actually contain data, which means that over 3,000 rows are blank. To quickly remove these blank rows, I can use Go to Special. 
First, pick a column that should always contain data. In this case, column A should always have a name. Then select the column and use Control G for Go To. Then Special, then select Blanks. At this point, every blank cell in column A is selected. Now use Control Minus to delete and choose Entire Row. When I click OK, all blank rows are completely removed. Now if I move to the bottom of the data, you can see that we just have about 33,000 rows remaining. Note that this trick actually deletes blank rows below the data as well. So be sure you don't have important information below the data. For the next shortcut recipe, let's look at a variation of the same problem. This worksheet contains measurement data. Altogether, the table has more than 1,000 rows, and each row has 15 measurements, using codes A through F. In this case, I also want to remove blank rows, but it's much harder to see which rows are really blank. I can't just select all blank cells in a column because adjacent cells in the same row may not be blank. One way to handle this is to add a helper column with a formula that does the check for me. For the formula, I'm going to use the sum product function together with the len function to check the length of each cell in a row. Since all cells are either blank or contain just one letter, this formula returns a count of cells that are not blank. Notice that I can't just double click the fill handle to send the formula down, because column P contains blanks. And if I try to extend the selection, I'll end up at the bottom of the worksheet. Here's a nice workaround when you have this problem, and it's actually a useful shortcut recipe itself. Move to the bottom of the worksheet with Control Down and then step one column to the left. Then move back up using control up arrow. This gets you near the bottom of the data. Now move right and extend the selection up. Then you can move the active cell with control period and enter the formula with control enter. Okay, so now I have a count of all non-blank cells. Now, I could just filter the list for zero values and then delete, but I can also use go to special. I just need to tweak the formula a bit to return true when all cells are blank and nothing if not. For that, I'll just use the if function. Now the formula returns true only when all cells in all columns are blank. I can use go to special again, this time selecting formulas that return logicals. Finally, with all true values selected, I can delete entire rows as before. Using the same basic recipe, you can remove rows that meet almost any condition. In the next shortcut recipe, I have a spreadsheet that contains music data. The table contains columns for genre, artist, album, year, song, and time, but only the first value is filled in, much like an outline. I want to run this data through a pivot table to analyze the music in different ways, but because the data isn't well structured, most cells are blank, so the counts in the pivot table summary are off. To fix this, I need to add correct values for each blank cell. On the surface, this looks like a really tedious job, because even using the shortcut for fill down, control D, it'll take a long time to fill in all the missing data. But there's actually a really easy way to add the missing data using a simple shortcut recipe. 
I start by selecting the entire set of data with Control A, then use Go To Special to select only the blank cells. Next, I enter a formula that simply gets a value from the cell above. Note that the address is relative. The trick here is to use a shortcut to enter this formula in all selected cells at the same time. For this, use Control Enter. Now all the blank cells have a value. This works because it creates a chain of formulas that all get a value from the cell above. So with all values in place, I want to make sure that the data is stable and won't change if the list is sorted by different columns. To do this, I'll select all the data again, copy, and use the shortcut for paste special with values to overwrite the formulas. Now, if we go to the pivot table and refresh, I get a useful summary, and I can work with the data any way I want. You can use the same recipe whenever you need to fill in data that's been organized like an outline and is missing values. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that training on shortcut recipes and you feel inspired to learn some more Excel shortcuts on your own. I'll be back uh, with another video to talk more about strategies you can use to learn more Excel shortcuts. And in the meantime, if you have any comments or questions, just leave them uh, below this video. And if you have a favorite shortcut recipe, I would love to hear it. I'll talk to you again soon.